In December of 2012, the Central African Republic descended into civil war as anti-government forces seized control over towns and cities in the north of the country. Within a month, the rebels and the Central African government had signed a peace treaty to bring an end to the conflict, but ultimately the terms of this agreement were not upheld, and by March of 2013, the rebels had marched on into the capital of Bangui and overthrown President Francois Bazise and his government. With this, the war entered a new brutal phase as law and order in the country disintegrated, and numerous rebel factions emerged, all vying for control over the Central African Republic. In the midst of the chaos, villages were looted and burnt to the ground, schools, hospitals and religious centres were targeted, and thousands of innocent civilians were subjected to untold violence. In assessing the situation, Adama Diong, the Special Advisor on the Prevention of Genocide for the United Nations, stated that, we face a situation of widespread and massive violations of human rights and abuses, such as has never been witnessed before in the country. In my assessment, the widespread, unchecked nature of attacks against civilians on the basis of religion or ethnicity constitute crimes against humanity. If not halted, there is a risk of genocide in this country. Based off this assessment, the United Nations authorised on the 10th of April 2014 the deployment of a 10,000-man strong peacekeeping mission to the Central African Republic, with the primary task of protecting civilians, providing humanitarian assistance, and enforcing law and order throughout the country. However, this UN force was too small and lacked the military capabilities to have a significant impact on the war, and in the years following its establishment, it was constantly fighting an uphill battle to try and achieve its objectives. For instance, in the period 2014 to 2017, the UN force sustained some 61 fatalities, whilst the only major success it enjoyed was overseeing the election of a new Central African government in March of 2016, which brought a degree of stability to the capital of Bangui and the country's southwest. In that same period, though, four new rebel groups were formed, and over 80% of the Central African Republic remained lawless and under the control or influence of the rebels. One such area was the city of Bambari, which in 2014 became the headquarters for a rebel group known as the Union for Peace in the Central African Republic, or UPC for short. In March of 2017, UN and government forces succeeded in driving the UPC out of Bambari, although the rebel group was quick to reorganise itself and establish a new headquarters in the nearby town of Bokalobo. From here, the UPC resumed its control over the country's southern areas, and throughout 2017 and 2018, the group made frequent low-level incursions back into Bambari, with the intention of mounting a large-scale assault at some point in the future, with the ultimate aim of retaking the city from UN and government troops. After much build-up and planning, this assault went in on the morning of the 10th of January 2019, when UPC rebels, armed with AK-47s, RPGs and mounted in pickup trucks, stormed into the centre of Bambari and targeted police, government and UN facilities. Detailing the nature of the fighting, a United Nations report states that The UPC adopted a guerrilla strategy, with its elements wearing civilian clothes and hiding in random houses in order to create collateral damage. UPC leaders, as well as community leaders under their influence, manipulated some incidents to fuel anti-UN sentiments within the population. The numerous UPC attacks compelled United Nations peacekeepers to use intensive suppressive fire and consume large volumes of ammunition in the process. Holding Bambari at the time of the attack was a mixed garrison of Central African police officers, troops of the Central African Army and peacekeepers from Mauritania and Nepal. After a morning of heavy fighting, this garrison was ordered at midday to disengage from their positions and retire to the vicinity of the UN base in the north of the city. Here, the UN force commanders gave careful consideration on how best to respond to the rebel assault, and eventually, at around 1800 on the 10th of January, the green light was given for a detachment of Portuguese paratroopers from the 2nd Parachute Infantry Battalion to move up into central Bambari with orders to hold the area and protect the local civilian population. Deploying from the UN base, the Portuguese troops were immediately drawn into an intense five-hour-long battle at the conclusion of which they had resecured the city centre and driven the enemy back into the eastern districts of Aji and Bornu. Throughout the day's fighting, the UPC lost up to 35 rebels, either killed or wounded, whilst the UN and Central African forces suffered a total of three casualties. In a press release, the Portuguese armed forces confirmed that their paratroopers suffered no losses during the evening counterattack. 
With their initial assault into Bambari having stalled, the UPC rebels went over to the defensive to try and hold their gains in the Aji and Bornu districts, both of which were fortified with barricades and fighting positions. At the same time, the UN and Central African forces began preparing for a counter-offensive to regain complete control over the city, and it was on the 11th of January 2019 that the first phase of this offensive was initiated, when two French Air Force Assault Mirage 2000 fighter jets took off from N'Djamena in neighbouring Chad and flew low over the rebel positions in a show of force. The next day, on the 12th of January, the second phase began when the Portuguese paratroopers moved out in their Humvee and Pandur armoured vehicles, in addition to an MI-17 helicopter, and executed a two-day raid against the UPC headquarters at Bocalobo. Despite being ambushed by rebels en route to their objective, the Portuguese troops carried out their mission flawlessly, and by the 14th of January, this headquarters had effectively ceased to exist, and the UPC had suffered heavy losses in both men and material. Once again, the Portuguese didn't sustain a single casualty throughout the raid. The footage on screen now was published by the Portuguese armed forces and shows the raid unfolding. Following the raid on Bocalobo, preparations are ramped up for the third and final phase of the counter-offensive, which was the complete removal of rebel fighters from eastern Bambari. 
For this, a company of Bangladeshi Special Forces troops were moved to the city on the 14th of January with the sole task of leading this phase. In support will be the Portuguese paratroopers, a contingent of Nepalese peacekeepers, and a Pakistani MI-17 helicopter which was to provide overwatch throughout the operation. Further assistance will be provided by troops of the Central African Army who are to be employed on rear area security duties such as guarding roads and other key points in western Bambari. After a six day period of planning, this long awaited final phase, which was codenamed Operation Begpar 2, got underway on the 17th of January 2019. On that date, at exactly 0800, the Bangladeshi Special Forces troops mounted up onto four armoured personnel carriers and two pickup trucks, and deployed forward into the heart of the UPC positions in the Aji and Bornu districts. Here, the Bangladeshi troops dismounted from their vehicles, and in the face of intense enemy machine gun and RPG fire, they started moving from house to house, methodically clearing each one of rebel fighters, and pulling to safety innocent civilians who were caught up in the crossfire. As mentioned earlier in the UN report, it was UPC's strategy to embed their rebels into the local population, which made it an extremely difficult task for the Bangladeshi troops to distinguish who was and who wasn't an enemy fighter. On top of these difficulties, a minor setback was encountered early into the operation when the overhead MI-17 helicopter was hit in its engine by small arms fire and forced to return to the nearby UN base where it safely touched down without further incident at around 0830. Although the loss of the MI-17 was a huge blow to the broader UN mission, it fortunately did not have a major impact on the conduct of Operation Begpar 2 for the Bangladeshi Special Forces quickly launched a couple of handheld drones into the sky to replace the helicopter and resume aerial surveillance over eastern Bambari. Thanks to these drones, the reduction of rebel positions continued apace, and by the early afternoon of the 17th of January, large parts of the Aji and Bornu districts had been cleared and were back in UN hands. By that time, it was also becoming clear that the main centre of enemy resistance was a mosque in Bornu district which the rebels had converted into a strong point with multiple fields of fire that dominated every approach. Given the risk of sustaining heavy casualties in a ground assault, the Bangladeshi commanders decided to carry out a mortar bombardment against the mosque in the hopes of breaking rebel morale. After six rounds from a 60mm mortar had been fired, the UPC garrison gave up the fight, with some of the rebels surrendering to the Bangladeshi troops, whilst the majority fled into the woodland to the south. With the capture of this strong point, the UN forces have regained complete control over the Aji and Bornu districts, and it was at around 1600 on the 17th of January 2019 that Bambari was declared clear of the UPC. Remarkably, over the course of Operation Begpar 2, the Bangladeshi Special Forces Company sustained no casualties meaning that throughout the entire week-long battle for Bambari, the UN and Central African troops suffered a total of three men killed and wounded. Besides four rebels who surrendered during the fighting, total UPC losses in Bambari are undetermined, although they are suspected to have been high. On top of this, the rebel group lost a large amount of material during their failed offensive, including ammunition dumps, machine gun mounted pickup trucks, documents, small arms and heavy caliber weapons, uniforms and communication equipment. A press release issued by the Portuguese Armed Forces concludes that Operation Begpar 2 fulfilled the UN mission's military objectives to repel the rebels belonging to the UPC, although new clashes are not ruled out in case there is a new attempt to return to the city of Bambari. The ongoing Operation Begpar 2 will continue in the coming days in order to simultaneously ensure the safety of the civilian population, reinforce state authority in Bambari, and prevent the rebels from mixing with the population and illegally occupy their homes. Thank you for watching this video, if you enjoyed it please be sure to leave a like and subscribe so that you never miss one of my future videos.